Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. As we enter the final month of the summer season, we trust you are all finding the time to spend outside enjoying the glory of God's creation. Today we continue to lift up Jesus Christ and the bread of life as Jesus proclaims. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It is therefore with warm and kindred spirit that we extend a special welcome to all attending worship with us, either in person or online. For we are all the, all the church together regards of whether we gather on the Sabbath day. We are so happy to welcome Kristen back after a much needed and deserved vacation in the mountains. With no scheduled special music, she will be gracing us with her musical gifts this morning. So at this point, we hope you have enjoyed the brief time before worship to visit with your neighbors, but now we want to invite you all to use the next few minutes during the musical prelude to prepare your minds and your hearts and to quiet your voices for worship. worship. The Holy One is just and merciful, righteous and compassionate, wise and near, desires the truth in our in one and will therefore teach us wisdom. May God enliven us. We long for God's presence and gather before God in gratitude and in awe of God's steadfast love. And will therefore teach us wisdom. May God enliven joy and gladness within our hearts. We ask God to create just, righteous, and loving hearts within us to renew our spirits as we declare God's praises and seek God in prayer. Teach us wisdom. May God enliven joy and gladness within our hearts. Good morning, everyone. Please turn 
uh, to your bulletin insert for our first hymn of the day, Bread in a Basket. Join me in unison in the prayer of invocation. Gracious God, we give thanks for your presence among us. In the chaos of our lives, you provide calm, healing, and sanctuary. Inspire us to be transformed as you immerse us in your everlasting and relentless presence. Spirit fills the atmosphere as we gather in your name from pew to park, from sanctuary to sofa. Open up our and inflame our imagination of the participation kingdom on earth. May it be so. Amen. The scripture reading today is from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boat and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food, 
that spoils, but work for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is who he comes down from heaven and gives you life of the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us the bread. This ends the reading. Grace and peace be to you all from God our Creator and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I mentioned it last week, but uh, who remembers the old Wonder Bread commercial from the 1960s? And what was their promise? Anyone? Wonder Bread builds strong bodies 12 different ways. Fascinating. All the promises that companies will make to sell a product. Fortunately, the rules for marketing products have changed since the latter part of the 20th century, especially in the food industry. For example, going back a few years, on November 5, 1973, the Federal Trade Commission ruled that Wonder Bread, which at the time was the largest selling white bread in the country, was falsely advertising their bread. The advertising campaign in question began in 1964 and featured television commercials with time sequence pictures of a child growing up rapidly and stating that Wonder Bread helps to build strong bodies 12 different ways. Now, the company later admitted that its bread may not contain any more nutrients than any other breads but insisted that that should not prevent it from extolling its qualities in advertising. In 1973, in that ruling, the Federal Trade Commission agreed, but specifically singled out one aspect of the ad for criticism. The commission said it was false and misleading to imply that Wonder Bread was an extraordinary growth-producing food and they ordered the company to stop making such claims, specifically the extraordinary part, stating that the Wonder Bread ad had the capacity to deceive children and parents because they portrayed it as an extraordinary food for producing dramatic growth. Our scripture reading this morning from the Gospel of John takes on... Uh, a similar tone, albeit long before the corporate world existed as we know it today, and before the corporate world was making claims about heavenly bread products. However, in a marketing campaign was developed, excuse me, if, if a marketing campaign was developed to describe the biblical wonder bread, Jesus himself, they could easily buy into the 1960s Wonder Bread ad insisting that Jesus was a unique and extraordinary bread, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, and could certainly make the claim that 
Jesus had the capacity not to deceive people or consumers, but truly to be portrayed as an extraordinary soul food for producing dramatic growth, albeit spiritual growth. And in those who would take him in, consumers, and become consumers of his message. Now, I don't know about you, but every once in a while I find myself doing something that I shouldn't be doing, and that's going to the grocery store hungry. I think we all agree that we should not go grocery shopping when our bellies are empty, when we're craving or hungry for something. Very dangerous because how we shop is based more on what looks really good right now, i.e. what we're hungry for, and less about what's on the shopping list, like the fabric softener and the paper towels and the toilet paper. The fact of the matter is, we in the 21st century can't really know what was on the hearts and the minds of those people following Jesus around in the first century. So we can only speculate. <clears throat> Truth be told, <clears throat> scholars seem to think that the crowd had their minds mostly on their stomachs, like going grocery shopping when we are hungry, for their ability, the crowd's ability, to make rational decision, decisions was strongly being influenced by their felt need, their hunger pangs in their stomach. However, <clears throat> despite this truth of those listening to Jesus, unbeknownst to them, Jesus had his mind on something more important than their physical hunger and much deeper in significance. So yes, yeah, and it, it, it may sound a little crass to, at first, but Jesus took advantage of the situation. He knew they were hungry for food. He knows why the crowds are there. And it wasn't for spiritual or religious reasons. And as we just suggested, they were there because they were hungry for food. And they believe that this wonderful teacher that they've been hearing so much about could actually and would actually feed them food. And of course, we know how the story goes. There were 5,000 and they all had their fill. After all, as I just stated just a few verses earlier, many of them literally ate of the bread and the fish that Jesus helped produce in feeding this crowd. And Jesus even refers back to it then in today's lesson. He says, uh, you know, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. You are seeking me, you look for me because... I helped you with your next meal. But the wonderment in the story is just how Jesus expands their understanding of physical hunger to encompass a greater spiritual hunger and a different kind of food offered by the wonder bread boy himself. Didn't you just see him standing there in a superhero costume? Wonder Bread Boy. Even though the hungry people came to Jesus seeking signs and to get a free meal, Jesus eventually talks to them about faith. But not just faith, actually, but bread too, metaphorically speaking. But not bread in the same sense that the people understand or mean bread. Rather, Jesus exhorts them to have faith, i.e., to believe in the bread that God gives right there. And just like God did in the wilderness in recalling 
the Exodus story, just like God did in the wilderness by sending manna from heaven to the starving Israelites. Because in a similar way that God provided back then, God has now given them Jesus himself, the bread of life. So, Jesus said, do not work for the food that perishes. And he insists in his little advertising campaign, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. Okay, Jesus. Okay. You got our attention. Your campaign is working pretty well. We're sold, Jesus. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Kind of an aha moment. The kind of food that endures, it won't spoil. Give us that kind of food, sir. And whoever believes in him, he says, and the moral of the story, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. A little throwback to the Samaritan woman at the well. Very similar situation. So yes, seems like a happy ending, doesn't it? And everyone lives happily ever after. Not so fast. As a preacher, I would be remiss if I failed to mention the underlying tension in this and other similar gospel stories. On the one hand, it makes us feel good when we identify the simple benefits for building strong bodies 12 different ways that John's gospel offers us on the surface. But the living spirit of Christ really does hope that we will dig deeper into the story and the meaning of the story, and that we will note the missional quality to the story. And elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus says, feed my sheep. He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. But in that context, we're talking about something in this case, yes, that's more physical and less spiritual, but the two really go together. Or as one theologian sums it up, the question of bread for myself is a material question, but the question of bread for my neighbor is a spiritual question. You hear that? The question of bread for myself is a material question, but the question of bread for my neighbor is a spiritual question. So, soul food, soul food versus feed my starving children. And I'm glad we have such a place, and some of us have been there to do some hands-on work. Feed my starving children. I was very blessed when I was in seminary to meet Bishop Desmond Tutu. Holy cow. What an amazing and spirit filled man. And he says it, maybe even better. He says, I don't preach a social gospel. I preach the gospel. Period. When people were hungry, and this is still Tutu's quote, I don't preach a social gospel. I preach the gospel, period. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ that is concerned for the whole person. When people were hungry, Jesus didn't say, now is that political or social? No, he said, I feed you because the good news to a hungry person is always bread. So the Gospel of John chapter 6 is a challenging text for us to reflect on. And Will Willimon's another one who speaks to it. He says, Will Willimon wants to encourage those of us who preach this particular story. 
But at the same time, he says, approach with caution. And he reminds us that the spiritual is our incarnational. The spiritual is incarnational. It is tied to the stuff of this life present here, now. And when we come to the Lord's table in a few minutes, it is right that we come to this table hungry in more ways than one. But more importantly, what we do when we leave this table. Because more importantly is that we leave the Lord's table to feed a world that is hungry in more ways than one. So we come to the Lord's table, table hungry, and we leave the Lord's table to go out and to serve and to feed a hungry world. So as we talk about mission, you know, we had great conversation yesterday at our Let's Talk Church. We talked a little bit about mission. We talked about practices and methods. And the one thing that seems to come up, I hope, time and time again, is what is our core mission as the church of Jesus Christ? And if our creed is not focused on helping others and loving our neighbors and feeding the hungry, but so many other things, if that is not our creed, then quite frankly, the Federal Trade Commission has every right to bring up charges against us for false advertising. Can I get an amen? Because if we're not doing the work and we're putting up our sign that says we are the church of Jesus Christ, then we're false advertising. If we're not doing the work, to help make the world a better place. Jesus didn't neglect physical hungry or suffering of the people, even as he preached the good news of the reign of God and the bread of life. And so we in the church should follow that example. For the one who announced his agenda quoting the prophet Isaiah about bringing good news to the poor and setting the oppressed free is the same one who at the end of this passage in John says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So our prayer should be as much about doing the work and realizing that our soul should never be at rest until God's work is done and accomplished. So as we engage in this time of prayer, of course, uh, we will open things up if any of you have uh, thoughts or concerns on your minds and hopefully we'll We'll have a working microphone this week. Last week it wasn't working. So. But let's just uh, sit in a time of, of reflection and contemplation uh, as we think about all that we've been discussing up to this point this morning. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. When there's bread for all people then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. When there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. Oh, bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. 
When we all have safe shelter, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, when we all have safe shelter, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. Oh, 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 oh. when we all have safe shelter, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. When there's peace on this planet, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. When there's peace on this planet, then my soul will rest, oh, my soul will rest. Oh, 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 oh. When there's peace on this planet, then my soul will rest, oh, my soul will rest. And as we pray and gather in this time of stillness and silence, we ask our loving God to embrace us and to not only provide us with the sustenance we need, body, mind, and spirit, but with the wherewithal uh, and the will to be about loving our neighbors and about serving those who are in need. And so we pray prayers this day and we open it up now that others may share any thoughts um, that may be on their hearts and they can be in the form of a concern or a joy. Just raise your hand if you have something you want to share. Uh, friend Gene Galgren is uh, entering hospice in Barrington right now. I'd like to wish my mother a very happy 100th birthday. Mm -hmm. Happy heavenly birthday, right? Uh, yesterday, as we gathered, I truly felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And for that, I feel blessed. Amen. It's a very, very productive time together, so we give thanks for that, and thank you for acknowledging that you felt that presence guiding us. Are there others? Well, certainly there are things that are sometimes too private to share, and we know that God hears those prayers. And so let's continue in a time of prayer. God, we give you thanks for so many blessings, for the weather that continues to provide us with uh, inspiration to be outside and enjoying uh, the beauty of this earth and all that is in it. Uh, we give you thanks for health for those who have received good prognosis. We pray for those who will be undergoing uh, any treatments or surgeries uh, in the coming week, uh, that they may know of your presence and that the physicians and surgeons and those who care for people uh, who we know uh, will be of steady hand and, and clear mind. And so we pray this in Jesus' name as we continue to uh, seek justice in our world uh, and pray for bread for all. When there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. 
When there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. Oh, 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 oh. When there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. Hear our prayers, O Lord, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace as we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There are so many ways that we recognize and celebrate the symbol of bread in our faith tradition. And not only did Jesus refer to himself as the bread of life, but when he shared his final meal with his disciples, he lifted the bread in a way that not only gave them a sense of understanding of who he was, but who they were as the community, because together we make up the body of Christ, therefore we are part of the bread as well. And so our scripture reminds us that on that night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. And in the days ahead as you break bread together, do so in remembrance of me. And so here we are, all these years later, still following that particular invitation and command that Jesus offered. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and after the meal, he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my cup of the new covenant that's poured out uh, for the forgiveness of all and poured out for all, that all may know uh, of Christ's blessing and Christ's presence and life-giving blood in the world. And so we ask for God's blessings upon these elements, the elements that you now possess in your hands. Uh, and so as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I offer you now the bread of life in Jesus Christ. And that we all raise our glasses together knowing this is the, the blood and life-giving sustenance of Jesus Christ. And let us pray. God of wonders, God of majesty, God of glory, we open our hearts to you, but we continue to offer our gratitude for all that you are for us, for all that you do that we may know of your presence, but all that your son Jesus Christ did, that he may be revealed uh, in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup to us, that we may in turn go out and to share the good news and to offer blessings and love and compassion and acceptance to all people. We give you thanks and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we greet you in the spirit of loving kindness. We are thankful for so many newsworthy happenings as we celebrate the community of Christ that we are here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. My name is Lauren, and I want to thank you all for joining us to worship today, either in person or online. If you haven't already done so, please sign the attendance book located in your pews and pass along to other folks. 
Like was said, this morning's um, flowers are provided by the Booker family in honor of Fran's 100th heavenly birthday. Happy birthday. Also, thank you uh, all who came out to Carry Dairy for last week's crop fundraiser. The next fundraiser to raise money for the CWS kits um, that will be assembled on the day of the crop walk will be at the Crystal Lake Culver's this coming Thursday, the 8th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., so the whole time that they are open. Just mention Crop Walk uh, when placing your order, dine-in, or drive through or pick up. We could not sustain our ministry without the generous support of our members and friends. If you do not choose to drop your offering in the offering plates during the musical offertory, you can always find the donation link on our website, or you can mail in your gift. Thank you. Join me in the call to offering. The gifts of God bless us. The invitation of the God to share those blessings with generosity, gratitude, trust, and love. Let us do the time, talent, and treasure from the abundance of God's provisions to us. Join me in unison the prayer of dedication. Generous God, thank you for these gifts and privilege of giving. Increase our collective resources that we might serve your kingdom and bring honor to your name. Amen. And if you would please turn in your hymnals to number 112, You Servants of God, for our final hymn of the day, number 112. Thank you. 
Some churches have a sign that says, we enter to worship, we depart to serve. So may that be our benediction today, that may you go to serve in any way that you can and share the good news of the bread of life in Jesus Christ. Amen.